illustrate and explain how to derive a demand equation using data from a demand schedule or a demand curve. You'll recall from earlier lessons on demand that I used the example of a survey that I gave to my class to determine the demand for candy in a week at a range of prices from $2.50 down to 50 cents. And this is roughly what we came up with. Of course, the actual data wasn't a perfectly linear relationship like we see here, but I'm changing the number slightly to demonstrate how we can derive an equation to represent the demand for a good when that relationship is linear. Notice, of course, that the law of demand is clearly on display here. At lower prices, there is a higher quantity of candy demanded by my students, and at higher prices, there is a lower quantity demanded by my students. What I want to talk about now is how to come up with an equation to represent demand. And you may be thinking right away, well, I learned in middle school or high school that the equation for a straight line is always represented by y equals mx plus b or some version of that equation. In this typical linear equation formula we had a couple variables like m which represented the slope and b which represented the y intercept. Well we're going to kind of flip this equation on its head today because this does not work for demand. The reason is that in the y equals mx plus b equation, y is the dependent variable. In other words, the value on the vertical axis depends on the value on the horizontal axis. But recall from our definition of demand that in fact quantity demanded is the dependent variable when it comes to demand. The quantity demanded of a good depends on the price the price does not depend on the quantity demanded. So what we're going to be doing is kind of flipping the script here and instead of y being the dependent variable we will be talking about the quantity as the dependent variable. And the equation we're going to use to represent the demand for a good can be expressed as follows. Q equals A plus B times the price. P is on the vertical axis so basically we are taking what would normally be the dependent variable the value on the vertical axis and making that our independent variable. So in this case Q depends, so this is dependent, on price which is independent. We've got a couple other values in here as well. Whereas the B variable in our Y equals MX plus B is the Y intercept, in our demand equation the A variable is our Q intercept or the x intercept. This is the quantity demanded when the price is zero. So we can say the quantity demanded when price equals zero. Sometimes this is known as the autonomous demand. It's independent of the price. If the price were zero, how much candy would be demanded? In other words, if candy were free, how much would my students have demanded. We're going to show how to calculate this in just a minute. Our B variable is not, as you may be thinking, the slope. Rather it is the inverse of the slope. Why is that? Well because we are now measuring the change in quantity resulting from a particular change in price. So whereas the slope would be change in Y over change in X, we have flipped that around because our x variable is q and our y variable is p. So this is the traditional way you may have learned the m variable in your linear equation, but we are now talking about the b variable in our demand equation. So we have here the basic equation for demand for a good. The quantity demanded of any good can be represented by the equation q equals a plus b p. What I need to show you now is how to actually determine the A and the B variables using data from a demand schedule or a demand curve. All right, so let's get down to business now. We know that the B variable is the change in quantity resulting from a particular change in price. It's pretty easy to find that because all we need is two quantities and two prices from our demand schedule. And we can do Q2 minus Q1 
and divide that by P2 minus P1. Let's choose a couple price and quantity combinations from our table. Let's choose 400 as our Q1 and 300 as our Q2 and we'll choose $1 as our P1 and $1.50 as our P2. With these we can plug the numbers in and calculate the B variable. So we can do 300 minus 400 divided by $1.50 minus $1 and that can be simplified as minus 100 divided by 0 0.5 Let's do that calculation now. We can do 100, we'll make that negative, divided by 0 0.5, gives us a B variable of negative 200. So we can now plug that in actually to our equation here. QD quantity equals A plus negative 200 times b. There's an important point to make here and that is that the b variable will always be negative because there will always be an inverse relationship between a goods price and its quantity demanded. So whenever you plug in two quantities and two prices you're always going to end up with a negative value for the b variable. I should say p here not b. Now how do we find the a variable? We define the a variable as the q intercept of demand. It would be the quantity demanded at a price of zero, but we don't have a price of zero here. Our price only goes down to 0 0.5. But what we do have is everything in our equation except the a variable. So all I need to do now to find the a variable is to plug in a q and a p from my schedule to the equation that we already have. So let's do that. Let's just choose this combination here. I'll choose a price of 2 and a quantity of 200. So I know that when the quantity is 200, I can say 200, that's Q, equals A, and I'm going to now just cancel out the plus sign here, and we'll say minus 200 times the price of 2. So I've just chosen this point on my demand schedule, which would represent this point on my demand curve and I can solve for A by completing the equation here. So let's do that. Let's move down a little bit. I know that 200 equals A minus 200 times 2 which is 400. To solve for A I move the 400 over here and I get 600 equals A. There's my A variable. And that would have been pretty easy to determine, actually, because I can see right here that if I were to continue this demand curve down to a price of zero, the quantity demanded is 600. Okay, so we now have our complete demand equation for candy based on the demand schedule and demand curve we see here. We know that the quantity demanded equals 600, that's the autonomous demand, the quantity that would be demanded if candy were free, minus 200. That's the inverse of the slope. That's the run over the rise. That tells you by how much quantity will increase for every $1 decrease in price times the price. So let's talk about that B variable one more time. If we started at a price of $2 right here and the price fell by $1, how much does the quantity demanded increase by? It's pretty obvious. We know it's 200 because there's a negative 200 B variable. So we have the rise and the run and the B variable equals the run over the rise. This is why we say it's the inverse of slope. You learned in grade 8 or 9 that the slope is rise over run, but the B variable in our demand equation is the inverse of slope. That's the run over the rise. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you determine the equation for a linear demand curve. You first find the B variable. Let's go through the steps here. So how to find, to find demand equation. The steps that I recommend. One, find B variable. Choose any two quantities and prices and find the change in quantity divided by the change in price from your demand schedule. Two, you find the A variable. And to do that, you choose any point on the demand curve and solve 
for A. Once you've done these two things, you will have your demand equation. In future lessons, we'll talk about the factors that can cause a change in the A variable or a change in the B variable and how that will affect the shape or the position or the slope of the demand curve. Here we go.